Next up, it's Jonathan, white space and the weird coding style. Okay, um, right, so I was, I decided to do this talk, but this being my first lightning talk, I was slightly unsure of how I should go about it. So I got some advice. I was told to start with a nice title screen with a picture of my subject. So we've got a nice picture of some white space here. Then I follow that up with a list of my points. So here I have some points. Sorry, you're, you're looking confused. Is this not how you write lists on slides? Hmm. Hmm. Maybe you don't like the fact that I've put my points to the right of the title. Let's, let's just fix that. And those, those bullet points, they seem to be on the right. We, we, we can fix that too. And this is now looking more like how we do lists, but some people like to go rogue. Some people go for exciting bullet points. I personally like these ones, except that there's something slightly wrong. Let's, let's change the first one from each list. This is looking slightly more familiar now. Well, this is code. This is a style of uh, writing code that I found very prominent in certain functional programming styles. Um, and much less so in things more like C++ or languages we may be more familiar with. But it does have several key advantages. Firstly, it looks like a list, like you might see on a slide or a um, paper or written down. There's a reason we do lists with bullet points. It makes it very clear what is in what list. And here we have three levels of nested calls. Uh, we, we can go much deeper, and it still became, is perfectly clear which, which argument is part of which call, which level, because you can just follow up the list of commas. This also works for other types of lists. This is a list of template arguments. Again, we are hideously nested here. We've got an array of maps from strings to vectors of tuples of ints. And right at the bottom, we have uh, a line that shouldn't be there and also the length of the vector, uh, the length of the array. I know that's the length of the array because I can look at the bullet points and they line up. This is how I choose to do most of my C++ nowadays. Um, we've got pram list here. We've got some uh, an initializer list, and we have a body. Uh, and again, whenever you see a list, it will start with commas, commas at the beginning, bullet points for a list. You can look up. If the top one is a colon, it's an initializer list, open paren, probably a parameter list. If you really want to go that far, you can even do statements. I haven't really been doing this, but I may decide to. It's very nice and consistent. So we can, again, look up curly braces in a list of semicolons, probably a load of statements. This is particularly good for maths. Here we have some maths. This is exactly the same thing. We're doing leading punctuation. And this is, this is particularly valuable because here, unlike some of the other instances, what that symbol is has some very crucial semantic meaning. Put it on the left. Put it where the I goes if you're a left to right language speaker, which most of us are. Um, just to demonstrate, that's how I've often seen it written. Uh, it is, you can, on this very small example, tell what groups with what, though I would argue it's definitely clearer with the bullet points at the beginning. But more than that, to work out what's the product, what's the sum, what I'm doing is just a lot harder. Um, so that's why I would always put lists with bullet points. It's what we do in English. It's what I do in code. It works. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Jonathan. And I will say I completely agree. I am perverse or enlightened enough to completely agree with you. That's how I code. Why was early history called the Dark Ages? I think it was because there were so many knights. <laughs> 